We'll keep the conversation going now. Keldon Bester joining us, who's the co-founder of the Canadian Anti-Monopoly Project, uh, and somebody who had been also watching, I referenced the competition walk, uh, dog suing to block this deal some time ago because of the worries over consumer harp. Uh, you, had, you had talked about that, Keldon, as a spirited challenge, and now we have laid out by the industry minister uh, all of these conditions that we've been talking about for the last uh, 20 minutes or so. Uh, what was your reaction to what uh, the government had to say? Uh, alongside giving the thumbs up to all of this? Well, you know, uh, I think that the conditions and the financial penalties associated with them is a positive step. But unfortunately, that reflects the reality of the transaction that I think a lot of Canadians are familiar with, is that competition is actually going down. And we've, we've traded away existing players for the hope that that competition can be replaced. And so as a result, we you know, need these conditions to even have a chance uh, for things to you know, either stay the same or potentially improve. So while I was you know, welcome the minister um, beefing up the commitments from his October statement last year, I think it really is a product of the weak laws that should be stopping these mergers in the first place. Well, it is interesting, and I thought that was particularly interesting when the industry minister was asked, how are you going to enforce some of that stuff? And he, he basically said, the buck stops here. I, I, I know the law, uh, and, and I'm in a position of power. The complication with uh, making um, these uh, decisions um, when obviously there's, there's constant turnover in government as well, it, it is tricky. And that story of enforcement really isn't a story of today or tomorrow. It is a long-term question. And, you know, it seemed like there were a lot of constant questions at that media briefing about where consumers fit into the situation. We should probably remind people, um, recently you saw because of hiked roaming fees, you know, uh, a fresh push to the CRTC to look into that. Um, so what would be, I mean, at the end of the day, for that fourth player, and obviously we're, we're now focusing on what Videotron with uh, the, the Shaw wireless assets looks like. There are obviously conditions for, for them within this as well. Uh, how do you see that playing out? What, 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 what would you be looking at with the fourth player part of this? Well, you know, the real thing to see is does Quebec Corps, you know, mount an aggressive challenge and does Rogers, you know, sort of allow that to happen, um, having created an allegedly disruptive competitor for itself? You know, what I'm worried about is that we've actually created a sort of softened competition with one competitor really dependent on another, um, skewing their incentives to, um, to, to compete aggressively. So we were, we're at the strange intersection where you know, we've uh, a competitor or an incumbent has created a competitor for itself. We've created these conditions that we now have to monitor. And, you know, the, the cross purposes that these corporations are working at really make the future uncertain. Um, people are entering agreements against their self-interest. Um, and as, like I said, creating competitors for themselves, something they never really you know, like to do. So what I'm looking for is you know, is that, uh, is that aggressive competition expanded or do we see sort of a softened, um, you know, expansion of our oligopoly markets that we're familiar with? I, I wonder too, Keldon, because you had wrote, written a, an opinion piece recently uh, looking not just at Canada, but at the U.S. as well. I mean, there are many jurisdictions where there are industries where there's a few players that have a lot of control and then reactionary moves by whether it's, you know, government officials or regulators. But in, in watching this particular process unfold, and, and for those who are just joining us, we're covering this breaking news, the government saying yes to the Roger Shaw transaction. Um, the fact that the Competition Bureau really took quite a stand during this process and the path that it may continue to take, quite frankly, when there are deals of this size and scale going forward in this country. Yeah, the important thing for Canada to do now is to really reform and revitalize our laws related to mergers and competition in general. You know, Roger Shaw, this is a transaction where even the tribunal says, you know, at least hundreds of thousands of Canadians are going to see, are likely to see prices increase. Um, although that didn't even include Ottawa, you know, a city of a million people that had five wireless carriers and is actually going down to four. That's just a net, that's just a straight loss. Um, our laws still allowed that merger to proceed. So, you know, first things first, I think we need a, a stronger set of laws to deter these mergers in the first place. And, and after that, we need, you know, a competition law that really takes that power seriously to ensure that, you know, consumers and other businesses 
um, you know, aren't uh, under the thumb of these dominant incumbents. 